Hey everyone, this is Shaban, and welcome back for another Game Programming Concepts Lecture. This time we're going to be talking about events, signals, messages, observer pattern. It goes by a lot of different names, but we're going to be learning about how that programming pattern can help make your code better, and as a bonus, how it can make your code worse. Let's start off by talking about, let's say, a scenario. Maybe you did a game jam, and you created a game that you had kind of pitched for the game jam called I don't know, Pizza Slayer, right? Pizza Slayer, of course. You know, it's, you thought it was cute, it was fun, and then you made the game, and it, it was starting to look pretty cool, right? So you have a, I don't know, you've got these little pizza monsters, right? A little, like, melty cheese or something like that. Uh, and then you got this pizza crust, and then it's got the anger eyes, of course, and maybe, like, a little toothy grin, some toppings. Uh, of course, the little fists, because they're angry. It comes hurling at you and then you also are this maybe this little character and it's like a ninja maybe you also have angry eyes and how do you defeat this pizza well i don't know the best way to defeat pizza uh bombs right you, you throw your bombs like whoa and here's your bomb and it has a little wick and it's cool. right and so that's how you you, you play and then um kind of later it evolved into this local co-op uh you know dungeon crawler thing and it was pretty quick to put together, right? You you had a lot of fun doing it. You made it just so that your character runs around the screen. There's another character that runs around the screen. And you throw bombs, and it's explosions, and the pizza dies, and there's little particle systems that, you know, make the pizza look like it exploded everywhere. And it looked like, you know, it was a lot of fun. So then you decided with your friend that you were going to actually expand this game. You are going to um, add more to the game. And this is where you start kind of snowballing into problems. If you don't think about the code architecture in a way that's going to be scalable. So let's say that um, there's a particular situation, right? And that's that the, pe the, the bomb hits the pizza, and the pizza goes kaboom, the pizza explodes, and it's really fun. Um, but as you add complexity to your project, uh, let's say that a bunch of other things happen too, potentially, when a pizza gets slain or something like that. So uh, let's just kind of write them all out. Um, so what kind of things could potentially happen? Uh, or who cares, right? So maybe um, when a pizza gets slain, then um, perhaps the level needs to know to unlock a door, right? Unlock a door when a certain number of them have been killed. Um, perhaps you have another situation where, since it's co-op, there'll be some kind of like team combo system or something like that, where like as each of your players, you know, kill these pizzas, like there's like a combo bar that goes up and it can be like, your team's on fire. And then they all, you know, all your teammates get to go into super pizza kill mode or something like that. Uh, perhaps there's an achievement system, right? Achievement system. And the achievement system, like, you know, maybe after, if you kill a certain number of pizza slices in a, in a minute, then you'll get an achievement. You know, you killed like 100 pizza slices in a minute or something like that, and you get an achievement. So that, want, that achievement system wants to know, right? So the level wants to know so that we can decide whether or not we should unlock a door, what door. Um, this team combo system needs to know. The achievement system needs to know. Uh, perhaps even the other players want to know. Um, because perhaps there's like, you know, some, they get health because like you're blowing up pizza and that somehow, you know, makes it so that you feel healthier. Everyone's healthier when you blow up pizza. And so everyone like gains some health because pizza was blown up. So maybe even, even other players want to know when anybody blows up a pizza slice or something like that. And then maybe other enemies want to know because there's like AI, some kind of, AI system that you created where the pizza slices all scatter away, you know, when they, when a, like a pizza slice explodes or something like that. Who knows? Maybe they get angry or something like that. Uh, and maybe just the whole, like there's some dynamic difficulty system uh, going on that you kind of added. And all these things are cool things that you're throwing out there and you're testing them out and you think it's fun. Um, and the dynamic difficulty system, you know, maybe it starts spawning these pizzas faster or something like that or spawns newer types of uh pizza slices or pizza slices that have more you know attacks or something like that uh maybe there's a music um kind of mixing audio engine kind of thing 
where like the music kind of fluctuates a little bit if you know an enemy is killed or something like that um, and of course then there's like user interface stuff right like for example um, there might be some user interface stuff saying like how many pizzas pizzas are left or something you know, I don't know something like that and uh, I don't know maybe there's even upgrades or weapon power levels or holy moly I like you know I mean it seems maybe a bit ex uh, uh, a bit excessive for me to list all these things, but it happens, right? There's all of these different kinds of systems that all want to know what happens when pizza is slain, right? This is the situation that occurs, and all of these um, all of these different systems want to know about it. So here's the question. The question is, how are you going to make that happen? How are all of these systems going to know when a pizza slice has been slain. Okay, how do we know that? Uh, well, let's say that we're going to first look at this in kind of maybe a more novice uh, approach that is going to produce a lot of different problems, but just so we can understand that. So let's say that in this particular world, or this programmer only knows how to be able to um, have code run if the code is being called directly, right? If the code, uh, <coughs> if the situation here, pizza slain, must call some kind of uh, other class directly. And so all references are direct connections, direct references to other objects. Okay, so for example, pizza slain, um, the pizza maybe is the first one to know because it's the pizza, right? The pizza has been destroyed. And so now the pizza, uh, perhaps, let's say it's the pizza object here. I'm going to actually type it to be consistent the pizza object, the pizza enemy, knows when the pizza enemy has been slain. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right. And so how is that pizza enemy going to let the level know? So perhaps the pizza enemy has a reference to the level, or maybe the level is a singleton object. If you want to learn more about singletons, you can watch the concepts lecture on the singleton pattern. Um, but maybe there's a singleton for the level, right? There's like a singleton here for the level. And so the pizza uh, enemy, once it dies, is like, oh, you know, tells the level directly, hey, uh, this pizza has been destroyed or something like that. And right for team combo, it's like, okay, well, how does the team combo system know? Well, perhaps the team, com it'll also like have a reference to the team combo system, which might also be a singleton. The achievement system also might be, you know, an object that's floating around almost like a global variable, you know, like a singleton. And perhaps the pizza slain is saying, oh, okay, achievement system, uh, I was just killed. So make sense of that how you will, and so on and so forth. Okay, so at this point, you can start to see kind of the problem here. Each pizza is going to have to somehow refer to all of these different systems. Okay, it's going to have to have like a direct reference to each of these different systems, and the pizza has to also know um, enough about the game and what's happening outside of the pizza to be able to know who it, who all cares about the, you know, the pizza being destroyed. Okay, there's all sorts of different situations or events in the game, and so do, does each object need to store a reference to each of these other objects or systems? Um, right? Does the pizza need to know? Does it need to have a reference to each of the other player objects? Maybe like there'll be like, you know, some several other player objects it does the pizza need to like store a list of all these other player objects are you now going to create a player manager singleton that like it communicates to and then the player manager like perhaps you have like some kind of player manager thing out here player manager and that's a singleton that keeps track of each of these little uh you know players and so the pizza like i'm just like you know, making this like even clearly, like even more kind of a uh, tentacular. Is that a word? Anyway, um, like tentacles. Okay, so so we can see this is potentially a problem um, because now this pizza object knows way too much about the rest of the game, and the pizza object will only work that if all of the rest of these objects exist in their place and behave correctly. So that means that if any part of the game breaks, then all of the game breaks. And sometimes an error will crop up in an object that had nothing to do with the system that broke. And you are now totally confused. 
right? So this is part of the problem. So you can try to fix it up if you're someone, again, who just is making you know, direct calls to functions inside of other objects. You can think like, oh, OK, well, I can kind of try to rearrange this a little bit better so that perhaps the pizza will, the pizza slain will tell like one object, right? You'll, you'll have like an object called like game manager or something like that. And so, you know, something like this, you've got this like game manager object manager. And it'll just tell the game manager. And then the game manager will like have the references to all these other things, right? That'll be, that'll solve all of our problems, right? Well, no, it won't because all you've done is kind of taking one step out from the same problem. So basically, sure, now the pizza is only has a reference to the game manager singleton saying, hey, game manager, you figure it out. But here's the problem. The pizza now still depends on the game manager, and the game manager depends on all the other things that it's directly connected to. Okay, so you can't individually test the pizza because if you try to independently test the pizza, you know, in its own kind of little test level, its little test bed, then it'll say, oh, you need the game manager in order for this to work because the pizza depends on that game manager class. And the game manager, uh, then like you add in the game manager, you're like, okay, now the singleton's there, the game manager. But then the game manager will be like, hold on, I depend on these other things. <laughs> like, and so now you're gonna have to go into the game manager and be like, okay, I need to comment this out and comment that out and be like, okay. So you're doing all this crazy stuff just to be able to test your game. Okay, now you're basically creating like a test branch of your game every single time you want to be able to independently test a particular part of the game. You can start to see maybe where some of the problems start to happen. Okay, so let's do this potentially a different way. I'm going to select this whole text object thing. Isn't that cool? I get excited about little things like that. You know, it's, it's copied and pasted. It's... Okay, neat. Um, okay, so we're going to do this a little bit of a different way. So we still have our pizza enemy. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of forget about all this stuff for now. Uh, that line means forget about that stuff for now. And the pizza enemy still needs all of these other objects to be notified, so to speak, that the pizza has been slain. All right, but how is it going to do it? It seems like it's you're, there's no solution, but there is definitely a solution, and the solution that you can use is what is called events. If in some languages, like C Sharp, uses the term events, uh, you can use signals, which are effectively events, but in other languages, such as GD Script, and then there's like messages, which is also part of the same kind of concept, a messaging system like you might find in like default or something like that. There's all sorts of different ways that this observer pattern is expressed. Um, but effectively, how this observer pattern works is that you have these events, right? So perhaps you have an event called, uh, well, let's type it out, um, pizza slain. That's definitely past tense, but it's kind of a weird word. So let's do pizza destroyed, because <laughs> we got to use the term destroyed, like whenever we're talking about games or anime. All right. Pizza destroyed is our scenario. And you know, I don't need this underscore. Let's, let's just get rid of it. Um, <laughs> pizza destroyed is what we call the event, right? Is the signal, is the situation that has occurred. And here's the thing. All of these different, um, these different systems or uh, objects will be listening to this particular event. So the UI, for example, will subscribe to the pizza destroyed event. The music mixing audio engine will subscribe to the pizza destroyed event. The dynamic difficulty system will subscribe. And when I say subscribe, I also mean listening, like the term listen, the listen for this particular event. All of the, each of the enemies will also subscribe to this particular event. Okay, so this event is, is an event that is globally accessible, right? So all of these systems know that this event exists because perhaps this event is stored in such like a singleton, but the singleton doesn't necessarily know anything else about the game. All it knows is that it has an event called pizza destroyed that it will what we call uh, emit a message to all of the listeners of this particular event. I'm like interchanging terminology here. When I say event, I'm referring to signals. 
as well. When I say listen, I'm referring to uh, subscription and all this kind of stuff. And when I say it will emit a message or something like that, it means that the, the event will have been invoked. These are all different terms that effectively mean the, the same thing depending on the engine and the language. Okay, so this, all these systems are now listening for this pizza destroyed event, right? All of them. Let's just go ahead and really draw it all out. All of them are now subscribers to this pizza destroyed signal, pizza destroyed event. And then what happens is that the pizza enemy, the pizza is slain, doesn't know anything about these other systems. All it knows is that the pizza was destroyed. So the pizza enemy will invoke the pizza destroyed event, or it will emit the pizza destroyed signal. And all of the various systems will receive that callback, will receive that notification. They will be what we call notified. Now the term in the observer pattern that is used here is that each of these are what you call observers, right? They're observing the pizza destroyed event. And the pizza destroyed is the subject here, where it's the subject of that observation. And they are all notified, okay? So when we're talking about the pattern that was kind of concocted in the 90s, that's the terminology associated with observer. Okay, so pretty cool. And so as soon as this pizza is slain emits or invokes this pizza destroyed event, all of these other systems will be notified. Okay, and the pizza destroy doesn't really understand anything about these other systems. All it knows is the list of subscribers. Essentially, pizza destroyed has this like big old list of subscribers, and each of these things like UI and you know team combo, all of these different things are subscribers to this particular event. Okay, so what we've done is we've essentially decoupled the pizza enemy from all these other systems. The pizza enemy can now be tested independently in its own little test scene because all it needs to do is emit a signal and it doesn't care who knows about it, right? It doesn't affect the pizza necessarily directly because all it needs to know is that there is a pizza destroyed signal and it will emit it. And uh, if no one was listening, it doesn't matter. Nothing happens, nothing breaks. Okay, if there are no listeners, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, so a common example that I like to use is the difference between kind of like an instant messaging system, uh, you know, some kind of instant messenger type of application like Facebook or something like that, and perhaps Twitter, right? So when we're talking like in an instant messenger, you're sending communication directly between different people, right? There's like you, and then there's someone else friend. And you'll send a message directly to your friend and your friend sends a message directly to you. Okay. And if you're sending a message and there is no friend, then it will break. It'll be like, wait, what the heck? <laughs> you just sent a message to nobody. You'll seem like a crazy person if you're talking to nobody, right? And that would be the system where you have direct references to everything. But Twitter is where there's you. And then you just tweet into nothing, basically. <laughs> And that's totally normal, right? If no one was listening or subscribed to you, no one would hear it, no one would see it, and nothing would break. That's just how Twitter works, right? So Twitter is kind of, oh gosh, what, how does it, is it, okay, gosh. <laughs> so essentially you have a list of subscribers similar to the signal, and um, whoever seemed, whoever subscribed to that particular event will then receive a notification. If no one was subscribed, then no one receives a notification and it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between those types of systems. So you can start to see kind of some of the benefit of it. You can test your pizza enemy separately. It keeps things decoupled. When something breaks in your game, um, it's much easier to independently test it because everything isn't connected to itself. You can't narrow things down as easily when everything is connected to itself. Um, but rather, if something breaks in the user interface or something like that, then you can test the user interface separately because all you have to do then in your test environment is to artificially call this pizza destroyed, uh, you know, callback as if a pizza was destroyed. But no pizza necessarily has to be destroyed. You can just effectively, 
artificially call this pizza destroyed callback. And if everything works in the user interface when that happens, then you're all good. And it doesn't matter because UI doesn't know anything about actual pizzas. It has no reference to pizzas. All it knows is that this pizza destroyed signal has been emitted. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, here's the question, though. When do you not use this, right? When is this a bad idea? Because often what happens is the, the programmer who learns about this kind of system is like, oh my gosh, I've been doing it wrong all this time. Like, no wonder I wasn't able to create a game past a couple of weeks because everything fall, fell apart. So, oh my gosh, I should have known about this like a long time ago. And then what they do is they overuse it. Then they do this for every single thing. They're like, direct references are terrible. I've been traumatized by all my broken projects. And I've gotten a little bit further in my game project because I've like decoupled everything with a messaging system with this kind of observer uh, programming pattern. But here's where things get a little overused and things get problematic because a game that is entirely dependent on this observer pattern for everything is also going to run into its own set of problems, specifically a huge meandering spaghetti mess of signals that are impossible to trace or follow. Um, it is very difficult to be able to recognize or understand what's happening in the code. So let's now talk about another particular scenario. Let's say that you have uh, an enemy. Okay, it's called the mushroom pizza, right? So you've got your mushroom pizza and it's like a whole pizza so it's like kind of a stronger enemy right it's kind of it's, it's a pizza and right and it's got slices and it's got of course the angry eyes and of course it's got the teeth um so this mushroom pizza is kind of special type of enemy because the mushroom pizza has uh mushrooms or let's say mush booms, right? They, they're, they're like explosive <laughs> or something like that. And you've got all these mush booms and they encircle the pizza, right? It's kind of like a, a like spinning shield of mush booms. Like, whoa. And each pizza has like, I don't know, six mush booms. And they're all kind of just spinning around the pizza, spinning around. And it's pretty cool, right? So if you get too close, then the player will hit a mush boom, and the mush boom will explode, like, kaboom! Ah! And then your little ninja character will go like, oh no! And you, you know, you lose, because... Mush boom killed you. All right. So let's say you're, <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's going on. And so you want to create this kind of... Um, whatever you would call this, the mushroom pizza enemy. So here's the thing. Let's say that how the designer has conceived of this particular mushroom pizza thing is that when a mush boom explodes, the mush boom goes away, and then after several seconds, five, ten seconds, whatever, the mush boom will then spawn its replacement mush boom to encircle the pizza, right? So there's always going to be like six, and then like a mush boom explodes, mush boom explodes, now there's only four, right? But after a few seconds, it'll respawn the, those mush booms and continue creating those mush booms, okay? So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> so here's the thing. Mush boom explode, perhaps, right? Mush boom exploded is the situation, right? It's the event that has occurred. And who cares about the mush boom exploding? Well, the pizza cares about the mush boom exploding, right? The pizza, mushroom pizza, let's just write it down. The mushroom pizza mini boss, or it's not really a mini boss, just a more advanced enemy, cares about the mush boom exploding. So the mush boom, I'm going to say mush boom here. Here's our mush boom object. And I'm going to actually move this out of here in case like my face is in the way. All right, so the mush boom object um, will invoke this mush boom exploded uh, event, this global event that everyone is able to subscribe to. And then the mush room pizza will then receive that notification because the mush boom exploded. OK, so it seems good, right? Everything is still fine. Well, here's the, here's the problem with this. Let's say that you've got more than one. Oops. How do I like create? How do I select? Hello, I want to select like all this. Cool. Okay, so let's say. Oh no, <laughs> it didn't put it where I wanted. All right, well let's just say <laughs> with scribbles that 
um, you've got multiple of these little mushroom pizzas, right? You've got like three of them, or perhaps there are 20 of them, right? You've got these all these different mushroom pizzas. So when the mushroom invokes that mushroom exploded event, all of the mushroom pizzas are currently subscribed to that mushroom exploded event. So how does the pizza know that it was its mushroom that exploded? So that it knows to produce another mushroom uh, after that mushroom exploded, right? So what you would then do is the mushroom would say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to pass myself, right? I'll pass myself as a reference, okay? I'll pass uh, this or self, depending on like, um, depending on the language, and you'll to the signal, and then the signal will then notify all of the different listeners that the mushroom exploded, and also a package saying, "Hey, and also the mushroom, the mushroom that exploded was this one." And so then the mushroom pizza, the mushroom pizza would then have to know that that reference, this self that was passed through here, happened to belong to it belong to the mush, you know, to that particular mushroom pizza. So it's going to have to know that it was its mushroom. Or, so it, so how is it, how is it going to know that? So now you've created this additional complexity to, or I would go as far as a complication to your system because now it needs to have that, you know, way of being able to understand that. And also perhaps let's say that each of these little mush booms um, go a certain speed orbiting around the pizza. Okay, and if there are fewer mush booms that are orbiting around the pizza, then um, they go faster, right? The, the more that there are orbiting around the pizza, the slower they orbit around the pizza, and um, the fewer mush booms that are uh, around a pizza, the faster those mush booms go around the pizza. So let's say the mush boom is what is handling its own orbit speed around a pizza. OK, so it's like on its own update calls, like, you know, updating its position as an orbit around the pizza. Well, here's the thing with that, right? What you've now done is that other mush booms. Um, I mean, it's really just comes back to here. <laughs> I don't have to create this other thing, but it's subscribed to this mush boom exploded event itself so that when one mush boom explodes, all of the mush booms are notified. OK, there might be like 100 of these mush booms. And all of them are notified when one mush boom explodes. Here's the thing. Each mush boom then needs to know, hold on, was that mush boom part of the orbiting system uh, that I'm part of? Should I be moving faster? Okay. So it then needs to have some way to like, you know, identify like maybe there's something called like pizza ID or something like that that can be passed through. And each mush boom has, a, you know, a pizza ID variable and it's given that pizza ID variable when it is spawned or something like that so that it knows. And now you're passing like mush boom and then you're able to get self, you know, the, the mush boom that exploded and get its, you know, pizza ID or mush boom ID or like, sorry, mushroom pizza ID or something like that. You see how you're like creating all sorts of systems that maybe will work, but then later when you try to look at it again or you try to bring another programmer onto the team you just are now suddenly lost you're like what why do we why am i passing this like integer into this thing and now i'm reading it in and it's a mushroom pizza index and you're trying to make sense of it and it's now played in with all these other because if you if you've done something like that you've probably done it with everything you know all of these different um <laughs> systems you've kind of created these complicated mess of information that's passed everywhere so now it's incredibly difficult. Your code is nearly unintelligible to be able to, to read and modify. All right, so in furthermore, let's say that, you know, there being 100 mushrooms, when one mushroom event, the mushroom event occurs, now all like 100 mushrooms are notified. What if this is like an event that is like continuous, like it's something that happens essentially every single tick, and it's now emitting it every single tick. So each mush boom is like emitting some kind of signal to all the other hundred mush booms every tick. And each mush boom is also notifying every other hundred mush boom each tick. And each of them are passing references to themselves. Like it's each call to this, you know, invoking this event is pretty, you know, uh, performant because it's just a call to a function, right? It's just a, a list of 
objects and each object is there, you know, they're calling their particular callback function on each of those objects. So it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's not like it's going to, you know, necessarily make your gun game run significantly slower, but it's still problematic because if it's happening every single tick and there's, you know, hundreds of these calls happening every single tick for no good reason. Okay. So coming back, it's like, if then we aren't able to use signals for this, or we are, but it's like, seems excessive and it's going to make our code hard to understand, then what should we be doing? Well, what you should be doing are direct references. <laughs> like, you see how it's like, there isn't like a one size fits all programming pattern that solves all your problems. There's no silver bullet um, programming pattern, you know, that's going to fix everything as much as you might kind of get that impression from other kind of snake oil videos. And so how do you then do it? Instead of composing your structure through signals, what you should recognize is that this mushroom pizza and mush booms thing is essentially a singular system. Okay, it's okay for mush booms to essentially depend on there being a mushroom pizza so that if you want to be able to test the mush boom, you have to also have the mushroom pizza. Okay, that's fine. You know, some, that's a concession that's worthy of being made. So instead, you have your uh, mushroom pizza object, right? Here, your mushroom pizza. So let's say, forget this for now. Um, and your mushroom pizza then has a you know, essentially a list of these mush booms, right? It has its own list of mush booms, perhaps, and so on. And it is able to go through its own list and manage its list of mush booms, okay? So whenever something happens, it will know immediately because perhaps the mush boom have knowing can know who its mushroom is, right? It can notify the mushroom pizza directly. And that's fine. You've essentially now created this kind of tight coupling, which is like often used as like a cuss word when we're talking when you talk to game programmers, this tight coupling. But it's fine potentially in this particular situation for the mush boom to be tightly coupled to the mushroom pizza, to understand its parent mushroom pizza, to understand the structure of this particular system, to notify its parent directly that I've been exploded or any other kinds of thing, and the, for the mushroom pizza to notify its children, you know, uh, that there are fewer of these mush booms and all that kind of stuff. It's fine for you to create a well, like a simple enclosed system with only a couple scripts and direct uh, connections because it's a lot easier to understand and read and you'll concede that you'll have to test the whole system as the system, okay? This is what I'm talking about when I say that there isn't one size fits all for all of these different systems. You just have to know that sometimes it makes a lot more sense to use signals and sometimes, or events, sometimes it makes a lot more sense to not. And kind of one way to kind of consider that is how uh, related is the system to to itself, to to each other? How 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 um, related are these objects? Is a pizza related to an achievement system? No, that makes no sense. A pizza should <laughs> those are two entirely separate systems, entirely separate ideas, and so those should be decoupled. And that's when you should be approaching things like message systems or like some dynamic difficulty s system. The pizza enemy does not need to know about the, the underworkings of the dynamic difficulty system. They can be entirely um, decoupled or should be entirely decoupled. But something like a pizza enemy and its own little kinds of like spawn, little spawning things, that should be coupled, in my opinion, because it is just the singular system. They essentially each part of that system depends on the other part of the system, logically speaking. It's not something that's tacked on later, like a music mixing audio engine or something like that. Okay, I hope that you uh, understood what was going on here. If you didn't, you can leave a comment. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And if you, you know, want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and uh, subscribe <laughs> to the uh, uh, video created <laughs> signal. And I will make. Well, I won't do it. YouTube or you know will go ahead and notify you, right? That was a pretty lame attempt at connecting this to YouTube. But anyways, cool. Thank you and uh, catch you next time.